Hi everyone! My name is Angela. I'm with Angela's Inspired Creations and today I am going to do my very first YouTube video which I'm very excited about. Um, I am going to be showing you a short tutorial on how to upload your own images into Cricut Design Space. Sometimes the image that we want is not available in Access or you might not have Access or you might not have the image. So you might do a Google search or something like that to find an image that you want to use for a project. Now, um, I'm going to be on my computer, like you can see in front of you, um, and I'm going to just show you quick and sweet how to make this happen. So if you stick around all the way until the end, I'm going to share one of my favorite sites with you where I get most of my images from that I can use even as a business that are commercial free, it doesn't matter if I'm selling the item, it's all free part of the Creative Commons license. Now, the first thing that I have open is I have my Cricut Design Space. As you can see here, I just opened up a new project, which is blank right now, and I would like to add a new project. So I'm going to go to Upload right here, and you can see some of my other images there, so we'll ignore those for right now. If you go to the Upload Image, and click browse and it does tell you that you have to have certain file types png jpegs gifs svgs dxf or bmp files um, so if you use photoshop like i use photoshop quite a bit i actually cannot use my psd files so please remember that when you are uploading so here you can see my download file is pretty crazy um, but let's take just a simple file like this butterfly because if you haven't noticed already, I have a little bit of an obsession with butterflies. It actually is an SVG file, so it already pulls it in exactly how I want it. I need to remember to change the name. This is one of my worst habits. I always forget to change the name, and then they have these random tags, and then I can't find the images that I want. So you can change your name to change the name of the file to butterfly, and then I would click Save and then I could just click on this image and insert it. Now, the problem is, what if I don't want to upload a PNG? What if I wanna upload something like a JPEG or a PNG file? Do, 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 do. Ah, here we go, another butterfly, shocker, and it's purple. So I'm gonna click on this butterfly, and of course it's already, um, got the clear background because it's a PNG. I need to find one that has a background for you guys. Okay, so when you get here, it's going to let you take away anything from this file that you might not like. You've got your zoom in, zoom out buttons, which are really helpful if you have small details that you need to try and remove, um, and an undo and a redo button. There's also the, this is the select and erase, which means I can do like that. Say I don't want the body of the butterfly, so I'm gonna take it out. You can erase and you can make this larger or smaller. So if you want to erase large spots, like maybe I don't like these little lines here. So I'm going to just kind of eh, take them out. Boop, done. All right, and then there's also crop. So if let's say you had something all the way at the bottom of your image and you knew that you didn't want it, you could crop out just the picture. And that way you don't have to worry about trying to erase something that's going to take you forever. All right, so then I'm going to continue. Now, this is very important because as you can see, you've got two different images here. We want to save it as a cut image because that means when we load it into our project, Cricut is going to cut it for us on our machine. If we do a print then cut, we can only print it on our machine and then you can send it into Cricut to cut around the edges, but it only does a certain size and we'll get into that in another video. So we always want to save it as a cut image. This is very helpful on this screen to make sure that everything you want it to be gone from the image is gone. Like as you can see, there's like this little tiny little spot right here. I think I want to get rid of that. So I'm actually going to click the back button, which you guys can't see because of my image. Well, there's a back button right there where my picture is. So if you go back, it gives you the picture again. So I'm going to use my erase erase this little bit that I don't want, Boop. just like I just was doing. Doop, 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 Boop. And then I'm gonna get that little tiny hair there that was bothering me. 
and I'm going to click continue and now it's gone from the image. So now I'm set. I don't forget to change my image name, butterfly, um, and I'm going to call it butterfly outline just because there's no body, there's no antennae. I think that's what you call it. And then I am going to see my recently uploaded images right here in this bar. Obviously I want this one because I have just spent the time creating it. So I'm going to insert it into my file and here it is. Now I can resize it as I need to. I can, you know, change the color. I'd like to print this, cut this in purple. I'm gonna cut it in purple, done and done. Maybe I wanna add an A so it looks kind of like my logo. So I could do an A in the font that I have. And I'll go through all the font stuff in another tutorial. But I could just like fiddle with it and play with it until the butterfly is doing what I wanted to do. Done and done. So that is how you upload an image. Now, where do you get the images that you want to upload into your Cricut Design Space? And what if you're like me, you run a business with your craft, um, you create things and people pay for them and you're selling items. Um, you have to be really careful that you don't use items just from Google. I see a lot of people telling people, just go to Google. I found the image off of Google and I just pulled it into Cricut Design Space and I can even get the watermark off. You can't do that. That's actually copyright. So you have to be very careful that you're kind of following the rules if you don't want to get in trouble. And I'm the type of person, I don't like to get in trouble. I'm definitely a rule follower. So here's what I did. I researched a ton of information about what kind of pictures that I can use as a commercial business without having to pay a ton of money. So there's actually something called the Creative Commons license, I believe is what it call, it's called, and it allows you to use images for free. They're royalty free stock images that are shared by the community and they don't have to um, be paid for and they can be used in items that you sell. Yay! So my favorite site to go to is a site that I found in my research called Pixabay. Um, and the best thing about Pixabay is that I can search for an image. So see, I've already come to Pixabay right here. And I can type in my favorite thing, a butterfly. And I'm gonna click enter. Now it brings up all these pictures. I don't really wanna use these type of pictures in my Cricut app, but I can go right here to images and scroll down to vector graphics. That's going to give me my SVG, PNG files that I can actually use and most of them are going to be layered if they have an SVG because you want the layered file if you want to be able to cut different parts of the butterfly in different colors without having to do it yourself. And that's a whole nother tutorial. So I can go in here. Oh, look, there's one of the butterflies in my account. Um, and I can find a butterfly that I like. I'm going to pick one that has colors like this one and it says free download. Now you do have to have a, um, an account and I think I just set mine up and connected it to my Facebook so it's quick and easy for me to log in. So when you go to free download, the important thing to remember is that you want the vector graphic because that's an SVG. You want the SVG, and I'm gonna download this, pops up right there. Um, and then I'm gonna come into my Cricut Design Space. You want the SVG because the SVG is the layer file. It has every different color that you need um, already there. Now I will say sometimes when I upload SVGs from Pixabay, they're not always layered correctly. Whoever created the file didn't do something right and they don't always come in correctly. So we're gonna see if this one does. Uh, this one came in a little bit weird but I'm gonna go with it. And of course, I'm gonna change my name. Uh, I've got three butterflies in this file and we're gonna just see what it looks like. So I'm gonna save it. SVGs, when you save, you don't have to remove the background, any of that. So I'm going to just insert this weird looking butterfly file. Let me delete this one. And as you can see, it's coming in over here with like a gazillion files. You just gotta go through and figure out what's what. Like I only want this little blue part so I can remove a lot of these files. Like here's the blue butterfly down here at the bottom. So I can probably delete everything, all these other little tiny groups, and it'll delete those other little butterflies. Yeah, so there we go. Now I almost have just this little butterfly. And here's all my cut files. 
the different colors so that when I hit make it, it's going to automatically separate it into the different colors on my Cricut Design Space onto my different mats and I'm set and I'm good to go. So Pixabay is awesome. It's one of the only sites that I found that lets you sort the images by vector graphics. And I have found so much through here. I use almost every image um, that I use in my business, I usually find in here. And if I can't find it in here, then yeah, I usually end up at Etsy purchasing files. But you don't always have to do that when you have CCO type files available. So look for them, find them, do things the right way so that you don't get yourself in trouble. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. You figured out how to upload your um, your images directly from your computer so that you're not having to always rely on Cricut Access or what you have on your um, cartridges already. And hopefully this was helpful. So if so, please show it a like. My very first video. I'm really excited to see what you guys think. Um, drop a comment below if you want me to do other videos and you have a question that you want me to make the focus of another video. I'm more than happy to take a look and see what other type of videos that you guys are looking for. If you're a new Cricut user or new crafter. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button down in the corner. I would really appreciate it as I try and grow my channel. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day. This is Angela signing off. Bye.